Ford's uh, Mini Trucker. It's been here, that US Mini Trucks. We're going international. I guess we've been at international. We're going national. I got this Subaru Sandbar KS4 four wheel drive. Okay, it's got rear diff lock. Everybody wants that. If you haven't got stuck, The diff lock gets you unstuck. So we're gonna walk, do a little walk around for a customer. This truck came and it's kind of a weird thing because it was dirty and the inside's really not that bad. And you can see the roof is good. I'm noticing the fuel gauge float is not working. So we could try to figure that out. We got a little storage back here. Mostly the problem when this one is this bed. I'm not exactly, I guess, you know, it's actually different kinds of metal. So you can see like if this one is an alloy with less uh, iron and this one is, you know, got more iron. So we got a couple of holes there. And then we'll just do kind of a walk around and then we'll do more of the, the troubleshooting. So it's missing this cover for the, for the engine. And then, looks like a couple big kind of chunks there. Looks like something here. And then I found, like this one is, I'm not sure where the, it's supposed to have a little latch there, so the bed kind of a little bit wobbly. I guess let's see what's cracking if we open it. All right, so it's not as bad as I thought. I don't know that how much structural. Obviously, it's pretty bad, but it's not like a total write-off. Okay, we will double-check the battery. This thing kind of looks a little rough. They put some supports on the sides, and then I've got some wheels. These are really super bald, so you can't really do much with these. This is the wheel set I was thinking to put on there. I've got a couple. These are kind of cool. It's kind of more of a street pattern, but you don't get any lift. And then these are the big boys and we get about two inches of lift. All right, it's a little bit drizzly. I'll pull it out of here and we can lift the dump up. So four wheel drive works. This light is for the parking brake. You can see that works. Here's four wheel drive. Okay. Engine coolant looks good. I've had this thing running. Uh, that radio works. It only gets AM. Uh, the blower works. And one thing I found, the heat only works on foot mode, and this is pretty common in the Subarus, but the, the selector diverter is not moving. So uh, I've seen before where that linkage kind of gets kaput, and I'm not sure if it's this one. You can manually select it. It's just a little bit of, of a pain. Let me see which one this is. Is the... Okay, so that's your hot and cold. And then your, your foot one is gonna be on the other side. Let me see. Yeah, I think it's this one here. You kinda gotta tweak it. So I'm not gonna do all that now, but the people were maybe wanting this in California or maybe it'd be better for like a warmer climate. Or you could just fix it, but... It's not something uh, we'll probably do here. Okay, we'll do a little headlight check. And then I'm actually gonna bring the bed up. So one of the signs of a weak battery, see how we're getting battery indication? And when I noticed the other day, when I had the, 
So when we go up, we are losing radio. So it shouldn't really happen like that. But let me turn this. Off. Oh, I didn't even say the coolest part on this is the push button start. So the key turns it off. It's kind of cool because, or just weird, but the, this will actually turn it over, but it won't start unless the key is in the start position. So I was at the port and I didn't know what this was. Of course, this probably says Japanese start here, but uh, I ended up getting somebody to tow me and we jump start, you know, push, I don't know what they call it, jump start, push start, where you pop the clutch and it started up, no problem, but this is the way you actually do it is just, yeah, his battery is. So that battery no good. You can see after we, so I've got a new battery. This one will actually come with a new battery then. But you can see a little bit of hole there. But for the most part, I mean, it's just kind of structurally sound. I always laugh because these freaking hydraulic rams are so overbuilt. People who see them are just like, dude, the you know the bed could fall apart but that hydraulic ram is going to be able to push anything frame here's the little, little motor for that thing it's got a little sight glass there the fuel tank so yeah your your selector would be here for the indication maybe we can i've seen before these things just it's not very hard to do the float. You just undo that and you could put it back on. You could maybe even, let me see. Yep, it's really didn't, didn't change it any. All right, so I uh, didn't have, I don't, I, I took this off and the engine looks really good. We are gonna owe the owner an air filter because we don't have air filters here. I've got a whole stack of them in, our home base in Colorado but both of these need air filters we're gonna have to ship them okay there's the frame inside of the frame so in theory I mean it's attached here and then on the back but you know if you wanted I had a customer who was building fences and they were wanting to put like a scissor lift you know, maybe do something like that. Or just leave the bed. Oh, this is how the beds work. So it automatically opens. Oh, my headlights are still on. No wonder they're not starting. Jeez. This is the dead battery sound. Okay. So we got this. And I did check the alternators charging. And the way these work, these little cams come down on here and they rest on here so when the weight just pushes that up it locks it in really good design i like that design tail lights headlights it's also missing the hold down for the battery which we'll have to figure something out i've got hold down brackets and probably for temporary we could put a bungee you know attach it there and run it through there like I said this battery no good anyway so a lot of people write and say about these terminals these are Japanese industrial standard terminals we use SAE in the United States so the way we're gonna get around this is just using a lawn and garden battery with the vertical post looks pretty good here yeah I mean surface rust on here but solid every sometimes we'll actually take these headache racks off and paint them but i wanted to give the potential owner kind of a, a sneak peek and if there's anything standing out write down in the comments what you guys think of this one let me lower the bed down it doesn't take very much battery to put the bed down and then we can lower this other side let's do that Oh, Jesus, I just I disconnected the battery. Here we go. Got batteries coming back. So 
and that's what I the last dump I sold I sold it and it went like a thousand miles and then the guy gets it and the thing is clicking over here uh, and that just means the battery is not good so there's it coming down and then you can see how these levers latch in so oh, pretty good and then this actually can come off so if you uh kind of just i think you yeah you just lift this up and then it slides out but you could take that completely off i was gonna look on this side see what kind of what kind of crusty rusty we got over here so stick in we're gonna pull that for her. yeah it's just at these seams you know you could imagine like somebody like tried to spackle or something. I mean, this is silicone, I think. So, it's something they've been dealing with. But it works, it dumps. Hopefully, you guys find this helpful. Take a look, see what you think. Reach out, write down in the comments what you think. And we'll just go from there. Alright, have a good one.